Welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to be checking out the Bridge City HP-12. Now, of course, while this plane was on its way to me, Rex Kruger posted his video about it, but I'm still excited to check it out to see if I have the same findings. So, stick with me. All right, so first things first, let's just take a look at the plane, and while we're doing that, let's run through some of these stats. So the plane comes in at 4 pounds, 13.1 ounces. It is, the website says 12 inches long, but it's a 16th shorter than that, but who's measuring? <laughs> It is two and three quarters wide and the iron is two inches wide. Now, this is pretty similar to the stats of the Lee Nielsen number 62. Um, if you're doing this as like a comparison, the Bridge City HP-12 is closer to the Lee Nielsen 62 than it is to the Veritas. The Veritas is about the size of a five and a half, where the Lee Nielsen and the Bridge City are about the size of a five. I know that it's not spot on, but just to give you an example. Um, I do want to mention that my buddy Dustin let me borrow this plane, and I am really excited that I got to try it out because I've seen them posted. I've seen videos about them. I've seen them all over the place, and I've wanted to give one a try. So let me go through the things that I liked about this plane, and then we will dive into the things that I didn't like. I like how it looks. Um, <laughs> that's going to be debated across the board. I like futuristic or modern looking planes. I think a little bit more than I do the vintage, and I know that that's like against the tool world, but I like the look of this thing. I think it looks really cool. I like the innovation that they have come up with and having double-sided irons, the way that the, the, the cap locks down, um, adjustable mouth is pretty standard, but I like their take also on the Norris style adjuster. Diving into a little bit of the things that I don't like. I don't like that that Norris style adjuster, I'm 99% sure is plastic. So it makes me a little nervous adjusting it. The way that that lever cap is, like I said, I, I think it looks cool, but I think they missed the bar a little bit there because the issue that you run into is I can't undo that cap very easily. And I'm, I mean, I'm pretty strong and that thing was taking effort to where I was worried that I was going to break it. So what you have to do is loosen the screw of the cap and then lift that up, which in my opinion defeats the whole purpose of it. I believe the purpose is that you can just lock that down and go about your day, but you can't unlock it that way. So what you would have to do is lock it down again, tighten that screw. One of the things that's really tough about this plane is sighting the iron in because if you don't tighten that cap enough, the lateral adjust is so smooth that it like goes all the way to the side. So you have to make sure that that cap is tightened down enough and then it's really tough to move. And again, it's plastic, so I was worried about breaking that. I guess all of that is to say that this plane's a little bit fiddly, um, especially when it comes to the double-sided irons. The way that you put the iron into the plane is I had to go like through the side of the plane, drop it down onto my index finger and like position it with my thumb. Taking the blade out, they say you're supposed to tilt the plane over and dump it out, and I don't like the idea of a sharp iron getting dumped into my hand. So I was kind of doing the same thing, putting my hands through the side of the plane or my fingers through the side of the plane, picking the iron up out that way. They could have come up with a better system for that. Um, if they are going to have the double-sided double irons and have everything as close together in there as possible. So... Performance-wise, this thing did a phenomenal job. You can take butter-thin shavings. You can take thick shavings. It's got the toothed iron. I didn't get any backlash with it. The only issue that I ran into is sometimes if you're going serious with the plane and taking serious shavings, it would knock that lateral out of adjustment, which again can be fixed by tightening that screw. But don't just assume that when you lock that cap down into place, it's going to be good and ready to go. You also need to check that screw. So again... I like how it looks. I don't like the functionality of it. I think they could have done a little bit better, but it is a solid user plane. I don't recommend this plane if you're in any kind of production because of how long it takes to change the irons out, recite it down, make sure that everything is locked in place. It just takes too long. Um, when it comes to the tote, I hate the tote on this plane. I think it looks cool, but to actually hold it in your hand hurt a lot. Um, if you're going to be using this plane for an extended period of time, it digs into all different parts of your hand. Everywhere that you're gripping on, gripping on that tote, it digs in. Um, I still kind of have a line from it, and I am recording this. I practiced with it yesterday, recording this today. I still have a line in my hand, um, and I don't really like have a mean grip on the tote. Just 
I held it like a normal tote. Um, the other thing I noticed is with the knob, where the knob was in relation to the front of the plane with how I hold it, the front corner of the plane was digging into the side of my hand, and I had to try to readjust what's comfortable for me when I hold a plane. I didn't have that issue with the Lee Nielsen or the Veritas. Um, I know with the Veritas, the knob and the front of the plane are farther apart than when it is when it comes to this Bridge City plane, so I know that has an effect. Um, but it just wasn't comfortable to use. Is it a solid user? Absolutely. Is it finicky? Absolutely. Is it uncomfortable? Absolutely. Would I pay $1,200 for it? Heck no. That is where we're going to run into, I think, the biggest deciding factor. Now, my buddy Dustin got this for about $400, and for that, I was like, perfect. That's not bad at all to me, especially if you're not in production. If you're just a hobby woodworker and you can get this plane for 400 bucks, it does everything you want it to do. It's going to take a learning curve because all of that, again, is finicky. The tote stinks, but you can replace the tote. Uh, but for 400 bucks, I think you got a good deal. So let me break this down for you and explain to you why I'm saying for $400 because there are other plane options out there that I feel would be better if the price of this is going to be $1,200, $1,100, whatever it is. Um, if you don't know about Bridge City and their marketing, they do this weird thing where they they mark the planes up real high and then they'll go on sale and drop them like 75% off. Like in doing this video, the plane is listed, I'd say about $1,100, but it's on sale for like $409. That marketing strategy drives me insane. Um, it must work for them if they keep making sales, but whatever. Anytime you're going to buy Bridge City, make sure that you wait until it's on sale. So let's break this down and give you a little example of what I'm looking at here. So you can get the Bridge City plane. It comes with the four different angled irons. Um, it has three different angles and one toothed iron with the plane. It also have the, has the wings. Um, I didn't mention that because that's not something I'm going to use personally. If you are doing a lot of the uh, Japanese, I don't remember what it's called, um, I'll put it up on the screen. If you're doing a lot of that, then the wings are going to come in handy. If you're going to thickness by hand for, for boards that are under two inches, then okay, it'll work for you. Um, personally, I don't see a use for that at all in what I do, so that's why I didn't even include them because I feel like most people aren't going to use them. But anyways, so for the Bridge City Plane, $400 if you get it on a deal. If not, $1,200. So let's break this down and look at the other options that you have. So, for example, you can get the Lee Nielsen plane. It's $295. You pay $65 for each iron, so add two of those. And then $100 for the toothed iron, and you get your total. Or, let's look at the other option. You get the Veritas plane. It's $284. $59.50 for each iron, so add two of those. And then $48.50 for the toothed iron, giving you your total. So that's where I'm running into the issue because you can get both of these planes for cheaper than you can get that plane and it's less finicky. The only difference, honestly, between the Lee Nielsen and the Veritas is going to be the size. Veritas is five and a half, Lee Nielsen is five. Lee Nielsen does not have lateral adjuster, Veritas has lateral adjuster. Those are the two main differences between those. I've tested them both side by side, they're both phenomenal planes. Bridge City is an awesome user plane performance wise other than that it's finicky as all get up um and i wouldn't pay more than 400 dollars for it because again veritas lee nielsen those are your options on price you can swap the irons out without having any issues not having to deal with all of that weird cap and stuff like that um they have a more comfortable tote so that's where i'm torn on it um i was hoping to do this video as just a focus on the bridge city plane but I can't do that knowing how much this plane costs and the other options that you have. So hopefully that helped you guys make a decision. Um, if you have any questions, any comments, anything like that, let us know. If you have the Bridge City plane, if there's a feature or something that I missed or there's something you don't like, whatever, let us know so people can see other opinions as well. Make sure you watch Rex's video because he dives in a little bit more into the technical details of this plane than I do. Um, hope you guys enjoyed and have a good day.